We're joined with Jim Ashby here at the Monday Night Community Show. Jim, firstly, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Dan. It's nice to be back. Um, we've had a busy summer at Sheppey Fire Station, hence I haven't been around um, as much as I'd like to. But um, it's nice to be back up here um, with the usual fire safety advice. And um, I've got quite a lot to go through this evening. So yeah, um, good to see you back. Thank actually. you. Um, firstly, to start us off, I understand you've been to um, an incident relating to um, smoking. So I was wondering, do you have any safety advice smoking-wise in the home? Smoking is a problem in the home and uh, we have been to a few instances recently on the island that involved smoking. Um, more people die in fires caused by smoking um, than any other cause um, within the home. Um, at the end of the day, tobacco is manufactured to stay light. Um, cigarettes themselves burn at something like 700 degrees. Um, so they are a problem in the home and it's a, it's, a, it's a common problem that we deal with uh, on, a, on a fairly regular basis. So just a few safety tips um, if you are a smoker, if you know someone that is a smoker in the home, um, just to avoid a, an accidental dwelling fire. Uh, the big one of course is never to smoke in bed. Um, people do smoke in their beds and it can be um, um, a, big, a big problem. Um, it's very easy to fall asleep and allow the cigarette to set a uh, light to your bedclothes and and furnishings and of course um, if you're feeling drowsy you shouldn't uh, smoke at all especially if you're sitting in a comfortable chair or if you've been drinking or if you um, take prescription drugs maybe um, it's very easy to fall asleep and uh, before you know it you've got a serious incident on your hands um, don't leave uh, lit cigarettes or, or cigars or even pipes um, overbalanced um, they can quite easily land on the carpet or other flammable materials around the home. And make sure that your ashtray is, is heavy and can't be easily tipped over as well. Um, so make sure that once you know, if you are a smoker in the home, you, 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 you're aware of where you're putting your cigarette whilst you're, whilst you're smoking. Um, make a, of course, make totally sure that the butts um, are completely out. Uh, when you're finished with them, uh, wet them and empty your ashtray into a metal bin outside rather than pitching your um, uh, cigarette butts um, into your domestic waste bin in the kitchen uh, and one thing that we always try to promote is um, child resistant lighters and matches um, try and keep your lighters and matches uh, smoking materials out of the reach of children um, it can be quite tempting for youngsters to um, play with the fascination of fire um, and I'll refer later on to when we go to uh, contact contact details yeah. Um, if anybody's got any uh, concerns about children playing with matches or lighters in the home, um, I can give some details about how they can get in contact with Kent Fire and Rescue Service, uh, especially in relation to children playing with um, lighters and um, uh, matches in the home. Uh, so I'll deal with that later on when we refer to contact details. Um, smoking in the home is, is a biggie for me. Um, I remember a 21-year-old uh, that was at university whilst I was serving in Canterbury. Um, overnight she, became, she came home one evening, uh, stayed up chatting with her friend. Uh, she fell asleep, uh, wrapped in a duvet on the sofa, um, and unknown to her, uh, the cigarette uh, was still smouldering, uh, the sofa began to burn, and the room silently filled with smoke. Um, she was woken up by the heat of the fire, but the toxic fumes disoriented her and uh, she quite readily collapsed um, and she wasn't found until the next morning when the alarm was raised. Um, a very small fire um, caused by just a lone cigarette and unfortunately that, that, that young lady lost her life. Um, so if you are a smoker um, just think about your surroundings and how you deal with your cigarettes and uh, lighters and matches and of course again later on in contact details I'll give uh, the Kent Farm Rescue Service website address out uh, for people to get any further information if they require it. We are joined with Jim Hashby from the Sheppey Fire Station here at the Monday Night Community Show this evening. We're joined back with Jim Ashby from the Sheppey Fire Station here at the Monday Night Community Show on BRFM. Now Jim, I know that uh, cooking in the home can also be a problem. Cooking is a problem uh, when it comes to domestic fires. Uh, more than half of accidental fires uh, at home are started by cooking. Many kitchen fires happen when people are not paying attention or they leave things unattended. So again, just a few tips uh, to the listeners uh, to bear in mind. There are several things that they can do to prevent fires in the kitchen. Uh, 
the big one of course is uh, make sure you don't get distracted when you're cooking and take pans off the heat and turn the heat down if you're called away um, or even better turn the heat off um, if you're called away from uh, the cooker uh, the most common problem is is people being distracted by a phone call um, they, they get called away to the phone and end up uh, 10 minutes 15 minutes uh, um, on the phone and before you know it uh, they've totally forgotten that yeah. the Sunday roast is um, cooking way nicely on the cooker um, loose clothing is also a problem as well whilst uh, cooking within the home just make sure that you haven't got any loose clothing around the uh, cooker whilst you're um, preparing any meals and don't cook if you've been drinking alcohol or again prescription drugs uh, you may get uh, drowsy or lose concentration um, we've recently run a campaign within the Kent Fire Rescue Service of, um, uh, that was called uh, Stand By Your Pan uh, and that was referring to a chap who fell, put some cooking on the um, oven, fell asleep and um, had a domestic house fire. So that was a campaign that we run uh, recently within the uh, brigade um, and people might well have seen the, um, the advert um, on TV and it's also on our website as well f um, for people to view. Um, toasters, they're a little bit of a problem sometimes. And it's always a good idea to um, check that the toaster is clean and well away from curtains and, and empty the crumb tray regularly as well. It might seem a trivial thing but uh, we have had a few instances where uh, toasters have caused a problem. And keeping the oven, and hu uh, oven and grill clean as, as well, uh, that's particularly important. Very easy for the build up of fats and bits of food to start a fire. Yeah. Um, and just a small fire in the kitchen can escalate to something a lot bitter, so uh, a lot bigger. So just keeping your, um, your cooking uh, your, uh, utilities um, clean is is uh, is quite important. Uh, cooking cooking with oil as well is obviously um, a problem, and you need to be especially careful when you're deep fat frying or cooking with oil because hot uh, hot oil can catch a uh, fire easily. So don't fill your chip pan or deep fat fry more than one third full of oil. Uh, that's the golden rule. Um, and try and use a thermostat controlled deep fat fryer which can make sure the fat doesn't get too hot. Uh, a lot of people have moved away from the old style uh, pan full of uh, cooking oil and moved across yeah. to the uh, thermostat controlled uh, deep fat fryer. Um, and I quite often ask the question, do you use a deep fat fryer when I go and visit people's homes? And um, a lot of people have moved away from these and they, they tend to just go down the chip shop to be fair. So. Um, but if you do use a traditional chip pan, then uh, the golden rule is one third full of oil um, and no more. And if you are still using a traditional chip pan, then uh, again, just a few rules about using it. Um, if the pan catches fire, then don't move it. Um, it is very, very hot, so uh, never move the pan. Turn the heat right off if safe to do so. Uh, don't leave o over. Don't lean over the pan to reach the controls. And uh, don't use a fire extinguisher on the pan of oil because the force of the extinguisher can spread the fire. But of course, hopefully everybody knows not to use water on a chip pan as well. Uh, this will cause a horrendous fireball within the um, kitchen area. And uh, I've seen some very, very bad burns on people that have uh, tried to tackle a chip pan fire with um, even the smallest cupful of water. Uh, so never use water on a chip pan fire. Uh, the golden rule basically is to turn the heat off if you can and simply get out of the kitchen and call the fire service. Um, if you've got um, a fire blanket within the kitchen, I know a lot of people do uh, use fire uh, keep fire blankets in the kitchen. That is only the um, uh, uh, piece of equipment we would uh, recommend in tackling a chip pan fire. Uh, it used to be uh, suggested that you wring out a tea towel right. um, but people tend to put too much water on the tea towel and again before you know it you've got a problem with the chip pan so the safest thing is to use a, um, a fire blanket if, if you've got one within the kitchen if you haven't turn the heat off and get out to the uh, get out of the uh, kitchen call the fire service and let us deal with the incident um, so there's just a few bits and pieces on cooking and it is a common problem so just a little bit of common sense and um, again the golden rule um, get out stay out and, and call us out we are joined with jim ashby from the sheppey fire station here at brfm <laughs> 